So, this is obviously here. I'm having a bit of trouble with my audio, so I hope this is loud enough. Uh, yesterday I got cut short on my Panopticon video, so this is the second part of Panopticon 3, Panopticon 3B. Um, I finished up by talking a little bit about Five Eyes, which is a joint partnership between America, Australia, New Zealand, Britain and Canada. And it was founded in the aftermath of the Second World War. Um, through the multilateral agreement for cooperation in signals intelligence known as the UK USA agreement on 5th of March 1946 initially comprising only the UK and the United States it extended it expanded to also include Canada in 1948 and Australia and New Zealand in 50, 1956 of these last three English speaking countries members of the Commonwealth of Nations and with similar political systems when compared to Britain. Thereby, Five Eyes term was created from the lengthy OSCAN NZ UK eyes only classification level that included the eyes that could have access to high profile papers and information. For more than 70 years, the one secret post-war alliance of the five English speaking nations has been an infrastructure of surveillance with a global reach and aging is not a problem for FVY, which remains one of the most complex and far reaching intelligence and espionage alliances in our history. Despite the fact that the alliance is known throughout the world and its existence is subject to endless debates, the real knowledge of how the Five Eyes works is still clouded by the security measures that involves almost everything related to the Five Eyes. The secretiveness of the Alliance is so severe that the treaty that created it was not in the knowledge of Gough Whitlam, then Prime Minister of Australia as late as 1973, and it did not come to the public attention until 2005. Only in June 2010, the full text of UK-USA agreement was released by the British and American governments and for the first time officially recognised. It's worth mentioning the importance of the UK-USA agreement and the subsequent Five Eyes for the special relationship. It helped to forge the basis for stronger cooperation between UK and the United States in the Cold War period. Fostering mutual trust and deepening the links between the two countries. In other words, the agreement consolidated the special relationship between Britain and America. Right. Um, according to the original declassified treaty of 1946, 1946 to fucking come up with this, uh, the parties agreed to the exchange of the products of the following operations relating to foreign communications. Collection of traffic, acquisition of communication documents and equipment, traffic analysis, cryptanalysis, decryption and translation, acquisition of information regarding communication organisations, practices, procedures and equipment. This shows the initial scope of the treaty and its ambitions. Furthermore, it is known that each member of the Alliance is responsible for intelligence gathering and analysis over specific regions of the world. Britain monitors Europe, Western Russia, Middle East, Hong Kong. Meanwhile, the United States also oversees the Middle East, plus China, Russia, Africa and the Czech Caribbean. Australia is responsible for South and East Asia and New Zealand for the South Pacific and Southeast Asia. Canada monitors the interior of Russia and China and parts of Latin America. In spite of this division, they work mainly together, and the final product generally is a result of more than one of its members helping each other is an essential part of this agreement. So, I'm gonna read it, UKDJ. 
Tanya there watching fucking every little thing. Just what fucking memes or warlords or whatever you want to call them. Fucking scary shit, so I know. And we get to this. This is what I'm thinking is going to come in a reverse. They're going to slide in a version of this. They already do the skills, don't they? If you if you believe well today, you get like five minutes extra play time or whatever, you know, positive reward. And this is an inversion of that. Um, people will just be terrified. Quickly get it. I don't want to keep the ages. Man, you can always turn off, can't you? If I'm boring, but bear with me because there's a couple of things what could do the looking at. In most countries, the existence of a credit system isn't controversial. Past financial information is used to predict whether individuals will pay their mortgages. What's mortgage mean? It means something like death. I mean, something like death pledge. <laughs> it, that d dead pledge, it means. Mort gauge. Uh, sorry. We'll pay their mortgages or credit card bills in the future. I fucking never paid my credit card bill in my life. I had six of them. I fucking maxed every one of them out and then fucked them off. Do I feel bad? Not one bit. Do I care? Not one bit. I enjoy spending that money. Yes, I did. Right. China is taking the whole concept a few steps further. The Chinese government is building an omnipotent social credit system that is meant to rate each citizen's trustworthiness. By 2020, everyone in China will be enrolled in a vast national database that compiles fiscal and government information, including minor traffic violations and distills it into a single number ranking each citizen. The system isn't in place yet. For now, the government is watching how eight Chinese companies issue their own social credit scores under state-approved pilot projects. This must be all this article, because we fucking have got it now. Yeah, look, 2015. Fuck that, that's bullshit. They've got it now. It's up and running. 300 people couldn't get into higher education last year because they couldn't fuck it, they wouldn't join up in the army, they wouldn't do military service. We'll have a look on the fountain of fucking absolute truthful knowledge called Wikipedia, shall we? Right. As of mid-2018, it's unclear whether the system will be an ecosystem of various scores and blacklists run by both government agencies and private companies, or if it will be one unified system. It is also unclear whether there will be a single system wide social credit score for each citizen and business. By 2018, some restrictions have been placed on citizens, which state-owned media described as the first step toward creating a national social credit system. The system is a form of mass surveillance which uses big data analysis technology. So if they've got it, we've fucking got it. You can guarantee, you can Guarantee you they've got it, we've got it. So anyway, it's on wiki. You want to check it out? Social credit system. It's, uh, I'm too, it's too depressing for, to, to read for me. Right? And you've got this fucking, these psychopaths here. Making this shit. Imagine a couple of these on your tail. Imagine one of these going wrong on you.
Tatang Hello. Imagine that on your case, man. Feet stepping on things and stuff. And that just won't stop. You get it right in itself. That's what they're showing us from a couple of years ago, so just imagine what the fuck they've got now. Next we're gonna have driverless cars. Oh this one's is this is the one I think it is. This is fucking mad. Speed of that. Wow, that's unbelievable, eh? I get over any terrain. Diaper funding, yeah. Mobility manipulation program. Well, what a fucking psycho thing have we got? Try this. Hang on. 
they've got some fucking spooky ones on that do flips and that. Wow. You get a picture there. Oh. Imagine a few of them coming after you. Couple of them malfunction. And decide everyone with fucking red jacket on's getting it today, <laughs> or whatever. They just, you know, strange things that happen. There's one what I want to find though when it's one doing flips and all sorts, and it's rapid. I watched it and I was like, that's fucking scary. I'm not sure, but I'll try this one. I'll just give this one. I think this one will give it a try. The, the one I sent me, oh man, I fucking like, oh please no, let me be dreaming. Don't let me please be making shit like that. <laughs> How long is it before you start putting like, um, bio parts in it, like living cells in it and tissue emerging wetware. Like you've got your software, like your programs and stuff, your hardware, which is your tech, and uh, what they call stuff you wear, like watches and like they call that somewhat, and stuff you have implanted in your wet, wetware. From the old science fiction books, like you call it wetware when you get implanted and stuff. And it's not long before they're going to start doing that sort of shit. I don't even think they need to, though, I'll be honest. Look at what they can do with just robots. Well, they don't need any fucking biological in there, I don't think. Oh, why do we just have to fucking boot that before it stopped coming for you? Right. So. We've got them building crazy fucking robots. We've got social credit systems. Five eyes again, five eyes again, and Glasgow in the running to become first UK's first 5G city. And local authorities in Amsterdam will apply for it. It will apply for up to £100 million available from the UK to trial innovative uses of 5G, which is due to be launched in the UK in 2020. Is successful. Glasgow aims to use the next generation infrastructure to boost the city's to 
boosted cities but um, economy by offering increased education and employment opportunities. 5G is expected to be considerably faster and more reliable than 4G with fewer delays and higher definition images. <sighs> Think it's fast enough already. What's a couple of nanoseconds going to matter to us? And the, the quality of HD, we don't... Our eyes can only see so much, our ears can only hear so much. So these people who spend thousands and thousands of pounds on stereo systems, if you're hearing shit, it's going to sound shit. If you've got brilliant hearing on a good system, it's going to sound good. On a thousand pound system, it's not going to sound any better. Your ears are only capable of such range. It's a fucking swizz. Well, this is fucking scary. They've got, um... Microphones, cameras, and every bus, microphones in bus stops. This fucking. It's going bad. It's going bad. Right. Um, there's some else I'm going to show you, and it's fucking gone. Well, extreme surveillance becomes UK law with barely a whimper. Investigatory Powers Act it legalises range of tools for snooping and hacking by the security services. You, you've, it's gone, there's no freedom anymore. A bill given the UK, blah, 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 sweeping surveillance powers in the Western world has passed into law with barely a whimper meeting only talk and resistance over the past 12 months from inside Parliament and barely any from outside. That's because the news don't report it. They just fucking keep spinning stupid fucking bullshit stories. Keep spinning their fucking lies while they're sliding all those pastors. Well, Snowden in 2013 revealed the scale of mass surveillance or bulk data collection and security agencies prefer to describe it. But against the backdrop of fears of Islamic attacks, the privacy lobby has failed to make much headway, even in Germany, with East Germany's history of mass surveillance by the Stasi, and where Snowden's revelations produced the most outcry, the Bundestag recently passed legislation giving the intelligence agencies more surveillance powers. That's Panopticon fucking three people. I am done. I can only stomach so much of this shit at once. Fucking the freedom is gone. Gone, gone.